Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and what I've got here for you is the smallest rocket, or at least the lightest interplanetary rocket I have come up with so far. Unfortunately, it's not 100% stock, but uh, I think you'll forgive me for the two fate stock parts, or the two non-stock parts, which I've accidentally included. First of all, when I built this, I accidentally used the refueling mod capsule, which has exactly the same mass and same parameters, so it doesn't actually affect anything. It just leaves this fuel transfer window floating out there. Um, the other part, well, we'll talk about that later. So, um, as you're seeing, we're lifting off on the um, on a turbojet, and the turbojet is barely able to counteract the 13.8 tons that this thing weighs at launch. So we're creeping upwards very slowly, and this is why it's good to have time acceleration on the video, because you can watch this without having to sit through it. Even at a four times two, eight times time acceleration, it is tedious, and also you can watch the whole thing jiggy about as physical time acceleration does its best to confuse my uh, autopilot here. Again, this took a really long time. It took five minutes to get up to the first kilometer, uh, first 10 kilometers. I think that is perhaps a record in and of itself for the slowest launch of a rocket. But yeah, we, now we uh, drop and we're now firing the smaller uh, engine here, the small, the, the jimbling engine, and it's burning fuel from those lateral tanks there. And the idea is we're gonna drop it and switch to the nuclear engine when we're going fast enough. And, Picking that time is uh, is critical. You don't want to get too high because then you're burning more of your fuel using the less efficient engine, but if you do it too low, you end up having to um, spend more time burning a non-optimal uh, launch trajectory. And you see that I'm actually burning up at quite an angle because I'm trying to build speed without falling back into the atmosphere. And ultimately, um, Oh, you see, I drop my fuel tanks and I'm onto the, the single remaining fuel tank before I've left the atmosphere. But uh, the vessel information tells me I have about three kilometers of Delta V left. And that will be enough to take me to another planet. And, uh, well, getting back, that's going to be something uh, something to look out for in a few, se in a few minutes. So, yeah, just... Um, of course, we're just using a mechanical jab here. I'm going to let it pop up out of the atmosphere, and once I'm there, we'll just circularize the orbit. Now, of course, the nuclear engine is ridiculously efficient, and that's why I'm building my spacecraft around it. Um, once it fires, you see it's going to need another 50 meters per second, so we're going to get out of this at about 2.4 kilometers per second delta V. Now we're going to be need about one kilometer per second of that to actually escape and set ourselves on course. We're heading towards Eve and, you know, we switched, we had to switch to a different spacecraft to do the time acceleration, but uh, we did it and now we're on our, our escape, um, escape burn. So, of course, burning around the day side here so that we, uh, we lose orbital velocity, though we are picking up velocity relative to the planet Kerbin, we will ultimately be losing velocity relative to the sun. That will bring us down towards Eve. Now, uh, a lot of people keep asking, oh, how do you compute these uh, phase angles? Well, if you use mechanical jet, there is a link on there to actually tell you. Uh, it's a web calculator that will help you guesstimate, or it'll do a scientific calculation to figure out what angle you need. But because the orbits of the other planets are slightly elliptical, those numbers are only a guess and you sometimes have to take several attempts. I advise saving or just uh, looking, at the de looking at it and trying to guess where you should be. If you are going outwards, you actually want to arrive slightly ahead of the target object, which means you want to leave a bit later, believe it or not. That will put you ahead, but you'll be moving slowly and they'll catch up. Whereas if you're going in, you want to come in behind the target because then you'll be going faster and you'll catch it up. Now, you see, I, I actually got an, in, an intersect very quickly here before I even finished the, the escape burn. And I'm just trying to recover it and get myself, get myself at a target on 
Planet Eve. Once I've got that, of course, I can adjust things down. Um, I also would recommend the Protractor plugin, which does a pretty good job of helping you guess when you're going to an encounter. Even if uh, you haven't actually got a close encounter, it'll actually tell you the closest encounter um, details. So you can kind of refine those. It's uh, worthwhile and it's not a proper autopilot, but uh, it maybe some people like that. It just gives you more in information. So anyway, yeah, we're going to do an aero braking maneuver. So we want to bring our periaps down to an altitude that lets us skim through the atmosphere. Now, mechanical jab. A lot of people have pointed this out and I keep not pointing it out. So here I am pointing it out. The landing autopilot, if you see... Underneath select target on map, you'll see it says predicted orbit after aero braking. And it'll tell you that for any atmospheric encounter. So this is a really good thing. What I want to do is I'm not going to EVE because there's no way I can take off from EVE with this tiny spacecraft. I'm going to Gilly, of course, which is the smallest moon and the one that we talked about deorbiting. Uh, it is on a highly eccentric orbit, so uh, we need to do some work to try and get an in, in, uh, get an encounter what i do is just i circularize um to get into roughly the same plane then I, well then i adjust my inclination to put it in the same plane as as gilly and once that's set up i'm gonna come around and we're gonna try to get a matching elliptical orbit either ahead or behind so yeah i bring out my bring out the Apple app so it matches that of Gilly, or at least is slightly beyond it. And then once we are on the other side, we will bring down the Perry apps so that the two match. Or again, we're not going to match. So what we see is that Gilly is behind us. So what we want to have is an orbit which is slightly outside so that it is, has a longer period. And then we can just time accelerate around and watch the uh, watch Gilly catch up at a reasonable rate and eventually it catches up and this took a long time it took like 200 days of, of time acceleration but that's okay uh, i'm patient uh the pilot wasn't going anywhere so yeah we're coming down and we get ourselves an orbit which we just drop onto the surface and uh, land here easy enough we just drop down and uh once we get close enough we can just click the the land button land at target apparently is terrible and the mech jab developers have confirmed that it really only works for carbon so you know don't be wasting your time like i did so now you see after all those maneuvers the uh, amount of delta v left in this vehicle is just over 400 uh, it's going to be about 400 and I don't know, something 430 maybe after we actually touch down on the, on the moon. And uh, I'm hearing you wondering, is that enough to get home? And uh, not only that, is it enough to get home and land? Because you can see there is no parachute sitting on top of this. Well, I have a different plan. And this is really the moment you've been waiting for. <laughs> because flying a small spacecraft to Gilly uh, is not particularly cool. But what is cool is the other non-standard module that I have attached to this tiny spacecraft. So what we're going to do is we're going to wait for the phase angle to get back in position. We're going to do a return. And you notice that I've also been looking at the orbital position. So we want to put gilly at maximum orbital elongation here and uh yep so we get out and that extra thing is a parachute it is the vanguard technologies personal parachute for the kerbals so i did the mathematics and i'm pretty sure that you don't you have uh or the amount of delta v needed to return from an ideal gilly um Gilly escape trajectory is less than the 500 and something meters per second needed or available on the EVA pack. So we're going to try and have this guy spacewalk home to Kerbin and land safely. So yeah, we just adjust the orbit. We're going to bring it down close to EVE, just above the atmosphere so that we can get maximum uh, use of the Oberth effect. I kind of waste a bit of um, 
waste a bit of my EVA fuel adjusting the inclination. Could probably do that a little better, but we end up with just under 50% of the fuel left. And that is actually the biggest part of the burn because here, um, because Gilly is on such an elongated orbit, it doesn't take much more fuel to put us onto an escape trajectory. And then, of course, going from the escape trajectory to a Kerbin intersecting trajectory isn't much more. So here we are. We're we're going to wait for the um, wait for the ah, the altitude to flip back vertical so that we're going upwards again. We want to accelerate around the dark side of the planet here. Uh, unfortunately, you uh, ha you have to basically try and line up this uh, this elliptical orbit as best you can, and that does limit your escape windows. I had to actually skip over one return window because the position of Gilly's orbit was not compatible with the return trajectory. But yep, yeah, so I'm doing my burn and now I'm getting out towards where Kerbin is and I'm just wanting any encounter. We uh, want to try and get any encounter and then once we get that we can adjust it and get ourselves a landing vector. So we're Kerbin's out around thirteen five hundred. Uh, there we go. We're just gonna move. We're gonna start adjusting it more carefully now, tapping the button bit by bit. <laughs> now, of course, they're inclined as well, and that is gonna take a bunch of fuel for me to adjust the inclination and get or get the two orbits closely enough inclined that we can actually land. Um, oh, and we saw one there. So time to rewind and there, look, it, it, it's kind of not sure, but it's there. It's got one 46 days out. So this is going to be a, you know, <laughs> a, 40, a 49 day return or thereabouts. It's going to be a really long trip for this guy in his spacesuit. But, you know, these Kerbals there are brave individuals and they will rise to the challenge. Um I just hope that he had plenty of energy bars. So 22% fuel left as well. 22% to turn that close encounter into an actual uh, impact encounter. And so, yeah, we do a whole lot of tuning around. And I actually, yes, I admit, I had to reload this like two or three times because I kept missing. And finally, getting them down. So we're wanting to skim across the surface because the... Um, because of Kerbal's reputation for streaking through the atmosphere without uh, being without being hindered too much by things like uh, air resistance. And there we go, dropping down towards the planet Kerbin, plummeting fast. Um, of course, I had to do this before the devs got round to adding um, atmospheric heating or re-entry heating, which uh, probably won't be in version 0.18. There we go, 49 days and 17 hours in a spacesuit, probably the longest uh, parachute jump in history. As I said, it is a non-standard part, but I hope you will forgive me for uh, this indulgence. Given the Delta V left on the surface of Gilly, you could probably get away with a, an altered design that uses a parachute to touch down. But I'll leave that as an exercise to the reader. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.